Personal Diary of Felicity Baymont March 21st Dear Diary Oh god, I haven't done like something like this since I was a little girl. It just sounds so silly coming from me now. It's amazing how life can change in the blink of an eye. A couple of months back I was in peak physical condition, training to run a marathon. Now I'd be lucky to hobble to the bathroom. How did all this happen? That's a good question. I can hardly remember myself. The last thing I remember is visiting a friend's house for a Christmas party, and then waking up in the ICU, barely being able to move. To my understanding, Black Ice was the culprit. I guess it was the airbag that saved my life, or what's left of it. So, here I am now. The doctors recommend that I start to write things down. They say it will help me better keep my emotions in check, and maybe even jog my memory. Jog my memory. Maybe I should choose my words a little more carefully. Everyone always tells me how lucky I am to be alive. But you know what? That's bullshit. I'm supposed to tell the truth here, if only here. Anyone who thinks we're lucky just for existing is too stupid to understand that there are in fact worse things than dying. I haven't slept well for months now. The funny thing about tossing and turning is that you don't start to appreciate it until you can't do it anymore. And I keep hearing voices coming from upstairs. When I finally do get to sleep, I am haunted by the hellish nightmares of the accident. It's the same horrifying images played on loop each time. My body being meshed and compressed along with the cold hard steel from the car. My body and it's forming some kind of demented sandwich. Every morning I wake up and spend a good minute or so trying to force myself out of bed, eager to pour myself a cup of coffee and take on the day. The sight of my bed sores and the agonizing pain that comes with them snap me back to reality really quick. Okay, okay, enough negativity for today. I have to remember what the psychologist said. Try your best to focus on the positive. I hate to break it to you, Doc, but once you've been thrown off the road going 70 miles an hour, the rose-tinted spectacles you've been wearing your entire life tend to turn to shit. Here I am now, laying in a hospital bed, set up in my family room. I can't even go upstairs at my own bed. And with the string of burglaries that's been going on lately, anyone could get in here in the middle of the night, and I'd be completely helpless. My husband, Jack, said he'll take care of it, though, and make sure nothing happens to me. At the very least, I guess I do in fact have him to be thankful for. I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for him, I don't know what I would have done. The poor thing was in the passenger seat that night. He had too much to drink that night and was riding shotgun. I've seen pictures of what was left of the car, and believe me when I tell you, that side took the brute of it. The luck of my hubby though, other than some bumps and bruises, he'll be back to his old self in no time. Even though he wasn't driving, I think he still feels guilty a little for what happened. He has to work a lot, but he made sure to get me the most expensive caretaker he could find to watch over me when he cannot be there. She seems great, I'll give her that, but for the money, I would think she would have slightly better attendance record. What was her name again? Alexa? Or something or other? My mind is drawing a blank right now. Although, the doctors won't admit it. I think the medicine is fucking with my head. It always has. But what can I do? I gotta take it. Asthma in a bedridden patient is a big no-no. The last thing I need to catch is pneumonia. Thank goodness for Jack and Alexa. They make sure that I never miss a dose. Well, I think that's enough for now. I'm kinda tired. Hopefully I won't need this hospital bed much longer. I miss going upstairs and sleeping next to Jack. It's too bad this damn hospital bed was only built for one. March 28th. Dear Diary. No, you know what? Dear God. I wish I was dead. Why couldn't he just kill me and be done with it? There's a lot of things I can put up with. But there's a limit to this nightmarish hell that I am willing to endure. 
Did I ever tell you that I can't even wipe my own ass anymore? Nurse or no nurse? I don't care if you have a whole squad of caretakers on standby. Words cannot even begin to describe how much that hurts your pride. But wait, there's more. I had myself a little accident today. Alexa sat me up on the toilet today to do my business. Everything was going okay until the telephone started to ring. I don't know what possessed her to do this, but she left me in there alone while she ran off to get it. I wound up falling at a weird angle and banging my face against the sink. Now I look like I went 15 rounds with Mike Tyson. The three of us had to talk about it when Jack got home from work. It turns out she was under orders for him to make sure the phone got answered. I guess he was expecting an important call. I'm glad to know Jack's job takes precedent over me. It's nice to know where I stand. Where I stand, look at me. There I go again with my words. I talked to him about it after she left. He apologised profusely and promised that from now on, Alexa is under no circumstances to talk on the phone while I am in her care. That's all I got, and I'm sorry, and an insurance that it wouldn't happen again. My head was killing me, and he didn't even offer to massage my neck or anything. He told me that he would have his echo to remind him to pick him up some cream for my eye. I don't think Jack realises this, but I can still remember where he keeps his gun. He's lucky I cannot get up out of this bed for myself. This room could use some redecorating, and I think my brains would be the perfect shade of red. I'm no gun expert but I did in fact take a photography course in high school. The general idea is basically the same. You just point and shoot. April 20th. Dear Di, you know what? Forget it, that's too childish. Down to business. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've last written. I promised the doctor I'd try to maintain a more constant schedule. It's all been for good reason though, I assure you. I'm sorry about my last post. I was in a very dark place. But I've had some good long sessions with my psychologist. And after a swift medicine change, I think I'll be okay. Plus, where my future once seemed bleak and uncertain, I now have a glimmer of hope. I've been working extra hard, both at physical therapy and back at home with Alexa. I'm proud to report that some of my movement has started to come back, and I'm now able to hoist myself up in bed and sit up for a little bit. The doctors were very pleased with me. They say if I keep this up, I might even be able to walk again. Granted, it would most likely be with a cane, and I wouldn't be running a marathon or anything soon. But it would be so nice to be able to walk upstairs again, to go get to sleep in my own bed, Unfortunately, that's where the good news stops. I wish Jack would have been more excited. He's barely said two words on the ride home. He was too preoccupied with his damn phone. It must have taken us 20 extra minutes to get home. We hit every goddamn red light on the way. If he wasn't checking a text, he was yelling into that stupid thing. Siri, do this. Siri, remind me about that. Talk to me, you son of a bitch. I might have been banged my head a little in the accident, but I'm not an idiot. I am your wife, let me help you. Take your eyes off the phone and talk to me. At least tell me who you're texting. That'd be something to talk about. But no, he's been so secretive lately, and I can't stand it. Ever since the accident, he's been this way. He says he loves me, but his heart just isn't in it. At first, I was grateful he got Alexa to help me out. But now I'm starting to think it was just more convenient for him to pay someone rather than to deal with it himself. I don't know. I guess I'm done for now. I'm exhausted. Those damn voices won't let up. April 27th. I haven't been sleeping well lately. Remember about those voices I was hearing? I feel like they were getting a little louder. I didn't get to sleep until around 5am this time. Jack keeps saying he doesn't hear anything. 
I don't know how we can't. I swear, they must be coming right from our room. He keeps telling me that I'm just dreaming. But I can't tell the difference between dreams and reality. I am only ha having one dream, and is still the nightmare of the accident. These voices are all too real. One of these days, I'll be strong enough to get out of this bed, and I'm gonna confront them. And I know I am not crazy. Alexa didn't show up today. According to Jack, she wasn't feeling well. So it was just the two of us today. I must admit, today he did seem to pay a bit more attention than normal. We actually had half a way pleasant day, even though I was pretty tired. He actually managed to take my mind off of it. He picked me up, just like he did when he carried me through the door when we first bought the house, and placed me into the passenger seat of his convertible. We had a pleasant drive in the country, and for dinner he took me where we had our first date. He apologised for being so tied up with work lately, and presented me with a bottle of perfume, both as a gift for doing so well with my therapy, and an apology. The bottle was partially empty, but I didn't care. This stuff isn't easy to find anymore. He said he got it at a garage sale. He knows how much I love the old fashioned stuff. At least he was thinking of me. I was so excited I could hardly contain myself. I think that's enough for now. It's nice not being able to sleep from excitement. I never thought I would feel this way again. April 28th God damn it. Son of a bitch. I can't believe it. Does he think I'm some kind of idiot or something? I refuse to put up with this. Alexa came back to work today. She smelled awfully familiar. I cannot believe that I didn't notice this before. That bitch was wearing perfume. The same kind Jack claimed he'd found for me. I'll bet he looked really hard for that, alright? I can't believe I didn't see it before. Alexa's absences. Jack's clandestine phone calls, him being constantly preoccupied, and those voices. I wasn't imagining them at all. And that bastard tried to have me thinking maybe I was really imagining it. I'm not going to stand for this. Literally. If I wasn't determined to walk again before, I am for sure now. I'm not going to let him make a fool out of me. He will pay for this. Me. 26th. I think this will be my last entry for a while. I'm sorry I've been gone for so long again. I had to take some time to myself. It's all been worth it though. Unfortunately, for my husband, my dreams have been coming in nice and clear lately. I remember everything now. The night of the accident, my husband was in the passenger seat, after he put himself there. One of us drank too much that night, and it was him. I was never the designated driver. I've been training harder than I ever thought possible, both at therapy and here at home. I decided to put my sleepless nights to good use and get in some extra exercise. No one knows this, not Alexa, not my husband, nobody. I can walk again. I've had to hide it from everyone. I'm not in tiptoe shape yet and my balance is very shaky. And I'm not the fastest, but I think I can do the stairs. I can hear the two of them talking up there right now. I think I'm going to drop in and pay them a little visit. Oh boy, are they going to be surprised. I found where Jack moved his gun. I guess he isn't as good as hiding things as he thought he is. It's time to end this. I hope he burns in hell for what he did to me. To whoever reads this first, my doctor, the authorities, I'm sorry, but this was the only way. The following day. This is a Channel 7 News special bulletin. We begin tonight with a tragic story of a domestic abuse situation turned deadly. 32-year-old Felicity Bermont was found dead late yesterday afternoon after her caretaker arrived late for a shift to find her laying motionless at the bottom of the stairs, clutching a 9mm pistol in her hand. Her husband, 34-year-old Jack Bemont, was found clinging to life in the couple's bedroom after suffering a severe gunshot wound to the chest. 
When he was discovered, he could still be heard muttering into his Amazon Echo, saying, Alexa, dial 911. Authorities believe Miss Bermont had to have been brandishing the firearm when she slipped down the stairs, causing her to break her neck.